It's a great pleasure for me to be here uh, to present this talk about my friend, the brain. Um, so my name is Xavier Vasquez. I'm a mathematician and neuroscientist. And my wife, who normally have, will have to be here to present this talk with me, is in Germany. Exactly at the same time she is doing a presentation. Quite amazing. Um, she is a neurologist and neuroscientist. So we can say that in the family, we are quite familiar with the brain. Um, but we have two different minds of thinking. I am mathematician, data, analytics. The first question I ask when we study together is, what are your available data? How I can model the mechanism of action of a treatment? How I can leverage this type of data? Modeling, numerical simulation, and we had a great presentation today of Richard about that. My role is to make some predictive analysis. How I can predict the clinical evolution of a patient. She is neurologist, different kind of mind. She is focused on the patient. How I can improve the treatment of the patient? What are the benefits for the patient? How can I improve the quality of life of the patient? How can I save lives? This is definitely the most important. But for me, the brain is like a supercomputer composed by billions of processors, the paradise of a geek. <laughs> 90 billions of neurons communicating. But when these two worlds meet together, discuss, something beautiful can happen. The first one is a beautiful child. <laughs> Elsa, cuckoo, where is the camera? <laughs> and the second one is new methodologies, cutting edge technology to improve the treatment of patients where they have very severe neurological disorders. So let's have uh, some example of the brain function. I have a, a little bit of fun. Who wants a brain, a new brain? <laughs> Nobody? Okay, you are very proud of your brain. <laughs> um, this is the brain of Albert Einstein, the real one. And this is the brain of Homer Simpson. <laughs> Don't make fast conclusions. The size of the brain is not correlated with the IQ, with the intelligence. And let's say that Hopefully, imagine some reaction between male and female. In fact, the brain of a male is heavier than the brain of a female. I repeat, there is no correlation between the size of the brain and the IQ. So don't worry about that. The brain is controlling everything. He's managing you. He is controlling every action you do. Conscious and unconscious. Imagine you are walking in a, in a, in a street and you stop, I, I have to breathe. <sighs> Let's go for another minute. No, the brain is taking care of that for you. The brain is taking any decision for you. Your brain, your brain is what you are as a human. So let's, let's have a, an, another example. You are in a square garden looking at birds, eating something, big hamburger, for example. Uh, the sun is shining, very good weather conditions, and in front of you, a beautiful girl, or a very poor, powerful guy. <laughs> and at this moment, you are falling in love. Ah, oh, love. For me, it's just a cocktail of chemicals, <laughs> dopamine, testosterone, oestrogen, oxytocin, vasopressin, etc., etc. What is that happening at this moment? If you take a photo at this moment, there are at least two areas of the brain that are more active. 
One is associated with the instinct. Love, instinct. And the second one, the feeling of euphoria. You are like, you are euphoric. You are exactly in the same state as people taking cocaine. <laughs> Love, instinct, drugs, I let you imagine. And there are some studies between women and, uh, women and, uh, and, uh, and men. And for example, the role of the oxytocin uh, for, for females, where they involve a kind of maternal bond. Who is the guy who never heard? Where are you going? Don't drive too fast. Be careful. Where are you? It's late. Don't worry, it's just the level of the oxytocin. <laughs> but it's exactly the same for us. The level of the vasopressin. A kind of, a territorial kind of behavior. This is my territory. It's mine. Don't touch. So it's quite amazing. Brain is very mysterious. And he is more electrical than we may realize. All over your body, cells are using electricity to communicate and stimulate muscles. And for example, if you think that your brain is like a, a battery, and you could tap all the electricity generated by your neurons. You have enough power to turn on a flashlight. So imagine at the night, you have lose your keys and uh, you can uh, uh, use a wire with the flashlight and uh, it could be funny. So it's a wonderful machine, clearly. But sometimes, and as we, we see with the Professor Touchon, sometimes, he is not working very well. For us, infections, physical traumas, gene mutations can provoke psychi psychiatric disorders, obsessional compulsive disorders, Gilles de la Tourette, depression, but also movement disorders, Parkinson's disease, essential tremor, and dystonia. So let's just have a look on dystonia. Quite impressing. Dystonia is a neurological movement disorder in which sustained muscle contractions cause twisting and repetitive movement and abnormal postures. This is a very severe condition that can impact the life prognosis of the patient. It could be hereditary, birth related, infections physical trauma, lesions within the brain, pharmaceutical drugs like neuroleptic, and this causes this type of uh, pathology. Today, there is no cure for treating this, the, the dystonia. And one way to treat this pathology is to put electrodes within the brain, to put electricity within the brain, so it's what we call the deep brain stimulation. You implement electrodes of stimulation deeply within the brain in several areas, what we call the basal ganglia, and specifically for the dystonia in a very small nucleus called intern globus pallidus. We are generating an electric field around the nucleus in order to control the brain in order to modulate movement as you have seen in the, in the movie. And just for the story, the relationship between electricity and treatments, it's a very old story. In 43 after Jesus Christ, there is a guy, or oh, I'm sorry, a physician, uh, Largus, who, uh, well, he was a physician of the Roman Emperor Claudius. And he used electricity to cure headaches and gout. But there, is n there was no electricity at this time. <laughs> what is the... He used a fish called the torpedo fish. 
who is gener gener um, generating electricity by himself, putting the fish on the water or you know, in the focused area of interest. So it's a very long story. And one key point of deep brain stimulation is to reach the target within the brain. How I can reach the target so deeply within the brain without missing the target? How I can be, how I can have a location within the brain? How I can see where I am in the brain? And the first guy who has an interest on that is Leonardo da Vinci in the 15th century. He was the first to draw in the manuscript, you see, a 3D plan within the brain and to add some landmarks within the brain. And two centuries later, you have uh, Descartes and at the same time Fermat, who introduced the Cartesian coordinates. And if you combine these two ideas, we have what you call today the stereotactic frame that allows to reach with a precision of 0.5 millimeters, a target within the brain. And we know exactly where we are, we are in the brain. And this stereotactic frame comes from two guys, a mathematician and a neurosurgeon. The meet between Sir Victor Oxley, neurosurgeon, and uh, Mr. Clark, a mathematician, and they, they developed a frame for animals at the beginning in order to know exactly where they are in the target. But they didn't have a child together. <laughs> so the goal for us, for mathematicians, physicists, neuroscientists, neurologists, neurosurgeons, is also to model the electric field around the electrode in order to try to understand what is the mechanism of action of deep brain stimulation, which is still not known. And when we put an electrode within this nucleus, and we put electricity, something special happens too. Please. How cool is that? He's walking again. He has a normal life. This technique allows to control the movement. This technique is applied to psychiatric disorders too. It's in development and in movement disorders in general. Next video, please. He has now 18 years old. I saw him last year in a theater dancing like a god. <laughs> That's just amazing. That's just amazing. Putting electricity within the brain can resolve some troubles. Thank you very much.